اهلا بكم من جديد كيف يمكن للمدارس اشراك الطلبه في مشاريع هادفه تركز على الابداع وتطبق المحتوى الذي يتعلمونه اعتقد هذا هاجس كل الاهالي نبغي مدرسه تعلم عيالنا ما نبغي مدرسه تلقن عيالنا اتس ان اندلس كونفرزيشن واكيد سبل الارتقاء بمستويات المدارس والفصول الدراسيه والطلبه للتحول من مستهلكين للمعرفه الى منتجين للمعرفه تلك هي اهم محاور جلستنا القادمه وهي السابعه لهذا اليوم التي تاتينا بعنوان التحول من استهلاك المعرفه الى انتاجها ويتحدث فيها جافيوتك المؤسس والمدير التنفيذي لشركه اديورو للتعليم ثانك يو ثانك يو ثانك يو ثانك يو Well, thank you for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, as you kind of uh, look at the numbers here behind me, what we're going to be talking about today is how do we move students from being just consumers of information or consumers of knowledge to producers of knowledge, which is really what we're talking about when we're talking about the knowledge economy. Uh, just as a quick introduction, I am a year four teacher. Uh, I that is my passion. Uh, I have an elementary ed education degree. Uh, and my wife is a school counselor. So a lot of what you're going to be hearing about is uh, 20 years of us in the classroom together, um, both in schools and out of schools. And over that time, I've had an opportunity to work with uh, students across all grade ranges from kindergarten all the way through. Uh, I now teach graduate courses at universities. But really what we have to be talking about when we're starting here, um, and the thing that I find fascinating is I've been going to sessions already, is we're all talking about these new knowledge skills, but nobody's redefining what the word knowledge means in a knowledge economy. And I think that's what we have to start with. We have to understand that when we talk about the word knowledge, we have to redefine what we mean so that we can prepare kids for that new future. And that starts with understanding that the idea of knowledge has changed in our society. Now, knowledge, knowledge used to be the idea of how much you knew, how much could you understand, how much could you memorize. That was the idea of knowledge. But in a knowledge economy, that all changes. In a knowledge economy, what we're talking about is how fast can you learn, unlearn, and relearn quickly. The ability to learn is more important than what you actually already know. And those are the changes we need to see in the classroom. Those are the changes of the educational system. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. And we're going to look at three different ways that we can bring that into the classroom. And then we're going to look at some actual uh, classroom, uh, uh, I guess, learning that you might be able to take advantage of that. So the first thing we have to understand is the generation that we're dealing with. Is we're dealing with the second uh, internet generation. The millennial generation was the first generation, and you just heard the speaker before me talk about trying to get those in their 20s into your cities. But what I'm focused on is I'm focused on the next generation, the generations that are in our schools now. And as of last March, researchers have decided that they are a different generation. Now, there are a few things we know about kids that are in our schools today. Number one, they are being raised media first. They are a media first generation. They watch video and they interact with images more than they interact with text. And we are starting to see that show up in our schools as we are having students come to school that know how to type their name on an iPad or on a phone, but don't know how to hold a pencil. And that's not that that's right or wrong, it's different. And those are the things that we have to think about. We have to understand that the generation we have today is media first, but so is society. And, and that, is, that is one of the big differences. And we have to understand that today's students and today in society, because we all have this in our pocket, as I see a bunch of them aimed at me, we are all prosumers. This idea that we consume and produce content in real time. The amount of content, the amount of knowledge that is being created right now as you consume this and tweet and Instagram it is exactly the world that our kids are growing up in. Our Children today will always know Twitter. Children today will always know Instagram or whatever the next thing is. Children today will always watch YouTube videos, right? We have to understand that we now call people, not places. And that's a major shift, a major shift of how many of you know that you knew and memorized more phone numbers when you were in middle school than you have memorized today? And for some reason, we have decided that memorizing phone numbers is something that we would offload into our digital brain, right? And so we have this idea that kids today should be producing and consuming at the same time. And that's going to put a massive shift on the educational system. I think this is best explained through one site, YouTube. 
I think YouTube, we can explain all the changes that we need to see ed in education for a knowledge economy. Because more and more as I talk with teachers, as I talk with educators around the world, the number one thing kids are saying they want to be when they grow up is they want to be a YouTuber. And why wouldn't you want to be a YouTuber? YouTubers can make good money, right? And here's the question. Raise your hand if you've ever learned anything by watching a video. Who's this is the only question I ask that I always get 100%, 100% of people, regardless of age, have watched video and learned something from it. That is the change of our society, right? The change in our society is that you get to learn something the moment you want to know it. Yet our educational system was built on a just-in-case model, right? The educational system that we have today was built on the idea that you need to learn everything you might learn in life just in case you need to use it later in life, right? I use my grandfather as an example. My grandfather had an eighth grade education. And the idea was you had to memorize every fact, you had to memorize your multiplication tables, you had to memorize everything. Because once he left school, there wasn't even a public library in our small town. You had the educational system, you had to know everything. And then the rest we just called life experience. The problem is, because everyone in here has learned by watching a video, we in society today have already moved to a just-in-time learning model. This idea that you learn something the moment you want to know it. I can't find anybody that learns and watches a video fixing their washing machine until the washing machine is broken. Then you watch the video, right? You don't learn how to fix your car before your car breaks. You wait till your car breaks. Then you go watch the video and figure out how your car breaks. That is the way society works. And we, this generation, the generation of kids growing up today only know how to learn in a just-in-time learning model, which is why, as educators, we get very frustrated because we try to tell you, you need to learn something on Monday for a test on Friday, and they're going to look at us and say, why don't I just learn it on Friday? <laughs> because I live in a just-in-time world, and that is a major shift in the way that we educate the knowledge child. The knowledge child has to understand. We need to understand that we're redefining what we mean by knowledge. Knowledge isn't a, here's everything you need to know just in case you need to use it in life. Knowledge is the idea that you can learn in a rapidly changing world the moment you need to know something. That's what it means to be knowledgeable today. Can you reinvent yourself three, four, five times? Do you understand that you have access to more than just one teacher in the room. You have access to the world as your teacher. And what does that mean? What does that look like? So here's, what, here's the big shift. A just-in-case model, the model of education that we see around the world right now is still focused on memorization as learning. We're still trying to get kids to memorize things that I can look up on my phone in less than a second. Why are we focused on teaching kids to memorize things that I have access to in my pocket. That's a switch. Why are we still focused on fixed facts of knowledge? We're still trying to teach kids that there are some things that don't change. I don't know about you, but when I was in school, I was taught that Pluto was a planet and it was blue. Pluto is no longer a planet and it's gray. <laughs> Facts change, and in knowledge economy, we cannot be fixated on this idea that facts are going to stay the same. Yet that is the educational system. That's what it's founded on. That's what it's built on. And lastly, we're focused on repetition as a learning model, that we want kids to know this idea that you have to do 20 problems for me as a teacher to know whether or not you know how to multiply. You have to do 20 problems and get 80% right in order for you to pass the test, right? That's the old model. We need to change that. In a just-in-time learning model of education, we switch the idea of what it means to be educated. We look for a system that is focused on this idea 
that a child must be able to connect nodes or information together, that I must be able to take information from different sources and make use of it. So yes, I might get something from a blog, and I might get something from Instagram, and I might get something from Wikipedia, and looking at those three things, can I make some kind of knowledge out of the informational facts I have coming at me? And that is what I know today, not what I'm going to know tomorrow, right? The next thing we need to th look at is a focus on the capacity to know more. It's critical than what is already known. This idea that whatever you know today is going to be outdated tomorrow, right? And we have to help kids understand that what I'm telling you today as a teacher or what we're studying today as a teacher is our truth today. The reason why I like books is because they are a snapshot of our belief in a time and place because we had to write them down on paper. And we use textbooks and we use books to look at this is what we believed yesterday. This is what we believed 10 years ago. This is what we believed 25 years ago. Is it still true today? The best use of a book in the educational system. And the last thing is the focus on the ability to see connections between fields, ideas, and concepts. This idea is, can I take something that I learn in science and apply it to math? Can I take something in math and apply it to a YouTube video? Right? This idea of linear thinking, linear connections is what we want education to be based on. Can I find something in one field and can I make a lateral connection? That is a heavy cognitive load on the brain taking something from over here and applying it in something that doesn't seem like it should fit whatsoever. So that's what we're focused on, right? We've got to get out of this idea of memorization, this idea of rep uh, repetition, and get to a new understanding world that the world continues to change, and so does the knowledge around me, right? The next thing is we need to shift to an innovator's mindset. And this comes from Finland. And if you have been reading any of the reports that have been released during this conference, Finland is one of those countries that is at the forefront, not of just of, of economic development, but of education. They've come in top three country in education. And here's one of the founding beliefs in Finland is that the opposite of success is not failure. In most education today, we see that success and failure are the opposites which is why if you get the letter grade F, it stands for failure. But in an innovative world, in a knowledge economy, we need to understand that failure is everything that happens right before you become successful. And the opposite to success is fear. The opposite to success is never getting started. That's the opposite. How do we create school systems where kids are in an innovative mindset and continually fail and failure is seen as a good thing. Failure is seen as all the work we do right before you become successful. That is a different mindset that we need to instill in a knowledge child, right? A child that's going to grow up in a rapidly changing world. It's a major shift for our educational systems to think this way, right? The, la the next thing then, and the last part of this, is then to look at Bloom's taxonomy, right? This idea of what are the stages of the brain where we see the most cognitive ability at? The idea that remembering and understanding being at the bottom, but what we really want students doing is creating and evaluating new information. We want them to be able to take in all this information and create something new with it. We want our schools and our classrooms to live in the upper end of Bloom's taxonomy. Yet so many of our schools, and for many of us, we were forced to remember and understand a lot of information that is very useless today, <laughs> right? Rather than focusing on, okay, what do I know, and then how do I create something new with the knowledge I just learned, right? So we have this idea then of taking these three ideas, right? This idea that we have to move to just-in-time learning, looking at the higher end of Bloom's taxonomy, this idea of creating something through... Uh, sites like YouTube, and we have to change the way then the classroom works. And here's what we have to, here's a major shift for every educator and why we have to retrain teachers, is teachers were told in the old world that we had to learn through process and procedure, that you have to give kids every step of the process and procedure for them to be successful. The reason why we say that is because as adults, that's how we learn. <laughs> 
once you hit your early 20s, the brain starts to solidify. And when the brain solidifies, what we want is we would like a manual. We would love if our next phone just came with a nice little manual so we could follow the directions. But if you've ever given a phone to a child, what do they do? They just start poking around, right? The child brain, and this has come straight out of neuroscience, the child brain learns through chaos and discovery. If we want to create a knowledge child of the future, we want our students to be ready for the knowledge economy, we have to understand that our classrooms need to be based on chaos and discovery. That is how the child brain works. Chaos and discovery first, process and procedure second. We take big, amazing ideas that we've never been able to bring into the classroom before, and we drop them in with little explanation. We allow kids to play with the ideas. We allow them to discover on their own what that means. And then as an educator, we show them the processes and procedures they need in order to make sense of the chaos that they find themselves in. It's a major shift. Every educational system that I've worked with across the country still te tells teachers and teaches teachers to teach in a process and procedure world. Yet the child brain does not work that way in a just-in-time learning environment. And if we're going to have chaos and discovery be what education is about, then we need to also have highly structured classrooms. Right? The idea that structure is what causes creativity. Limitations are what create uh, creativity, right? or what causes creativity. So we need to have classrooms that are highly structured, loosely organized. The idea that I'm going to structure my class in a way that allow kids to be chaotic, allow learning to be messy, it's going to be loud, kids are going to be out of their seat, it's going to look like chaos. And within that is where learning happens. Because students start to organize the learning themselves. The idea of becoming a lifelong learner is the idea that you are in a chaotic world and that you have to create processes and procedures to make sense of that world. And that is the innovative mindset. That is the idea of the knowledge economy. That stuff is going to continue to continue to change, but there's a structure in place to allow us to learn and for students to organize that learning for themselves. So as I wrap up, I wanted to show you some examples of ways that you might be able to do this in your classroom. What are some ways that we can simply take these ideas and apply them into our classroom? And the idea is getting kids to not just consume information, but consume and then create at the same time. One of my favorite things is Wikipedia, right? A lot of times we think of Wikipedia as a place to go for information, not a place to create information. If anybody and everybody can edit Wikipedia, why aren't children editing Wikipedia? I have had third graders, nine-year-olds, edit Wikipedia. Add value to the world. Add value to a knowledge economy in a place that the world uses. The largest body of knowledge ever created by mankind in every language around the world is Wikipedia, and your students can add to it too. Or if you don't like Wikipedia, how about the Wikibooks project, where we are creating we're actually creating all of these textbooks that are open and students can create the book because chapter two on dinosaurs doesn't exist. Eight-year-olds can write it, right? Because algebra two, the chapter on algebra and equations doesn't exist, your students can write it and add knowledge to the world. How about something like compare or create, right? Compose or create something. This is, these are two students Generally, we'll play this video, who have taken their idea of wind energy, energy and in a lateral way created a solar, YouTube video using what electric electric we call a common gas. craft style to explain their Wait, understanding energy? of energy. This is wind energy right? in plain gibberish by common craft. So we're taking so something from one field, the idea of this science knowledge, and applying it so to a whole new cool field, something that kids are very interested in, which is a YouTube world, right? Or how about the idea of combining and mashing up stuff? This is a video created by a, uh, I guess, 15-year-old at the time, where they took the hottest song of the summer and took all the free video and images being released by NASA and put together their own music video, right? So they're taking everything that they understand about the Curiosity rover that's on Mars and the hottest song of the summer a few years ago 
and making something new from it. The idea that we can have kids combine things because we have access to these things. So taking two different fields and creating something new from it, right? And if you actually, if I played this through and you listen to the lyrics, then the amount that I, I just, what's going on in this child's brain that the lyrics actually match up with the images? How much time did the child spend putting this together and I can't get them to do a page of homework at night, right? Or how about the idea of hypothesize or predict? Because they are a media first generation, how do we use media, I like to say, against, the, against them, right? How do we use media to enhance them? So here's a video I found off of YouTube. And if you mute just one piece of information, you have a really interesting question. Let's listen. Last year, the US alone used over 39 billion plastic bottles of water. That's enough to stretch around the earth over Each Brita filter can take up to 300 of those bottles out of the equation. It's a small step that can make a big difference. So all I had to do was mute one piece of information and I have a really interesting question for students to start playing with. In a in a median that speaks to them, this idea of visuals, this idea of video, right? I hear from parents all the time that kids today just sit around watching other kids play games. I got news for you. Every generation has sat around watching people play games. It's the reason why the Rome Colosseum was built. It's not new. The game is different, the screen is different, and I would even say kids today, they watch other kids play videos to get better at playing the game. We watch the Romans fight for fun, not to get better, right? They're actually doing more than we ever did by watching others play games. So just to recap, here's the three things we need to think about when we're thinking about reimagining education for a knowledge economy. Number one, we need to move our schools from just-in-case to just-in-time models of learning. Institutions where we're helping and teaching kids who already live in a just-in-time world, using that in our classrooms. We need to understand that failure is a part of success. We need to change the way we evaluate students. We need to set a new mindset in children to understand that failure is everything that happens right before you succeed. And lastly, we need to move from this idea of students just consuming information in schools to actually producing knowledge because they have the tools available to them to become producers today. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you, Jeff.